Hi, my name is Francesca and for today's Empower Amsterdam online chat, we're very delighted to welcome Ravi Amaraturunga Hitchcock, the founder, co-founder of Sourzop, which is a pop culture um, focused creative agency in Amsterdam. And their clients include Maserati, Samsung, Nike, Boiler Room and Van Moot. He's going to be sharing his insightful methods about how to stay inspired after now nearly 10 months of the pandemic. Empower Amsterdam has been building a virtual community throughout this pandemic and so we're very delighted to welcome you to our talk today. In our community chat we like to take a different topic each week where you receive advice from experts and have the chance to talk about this amongst yourself afterwards in breakout rooms. This is also a great opportunity for yourselves to network outside of being able to meet physically um, and we hope that every connection you help um, sorry, every connection you make helps you lead yourself closer to your own career goals. We record each of our talks, which I'll see what we're doing today too, and this will be available on our YouTube channel afterwards for you to replay or share um, with others. You can also find other talks from our series on our YouTube channel, and we'll send you the link. Um, the link will be available afterwards. Today's topic, as I've mentioned, is how to stay inspired. With so much negative news bombard bombarding our social feeds and on the news, we're in a never ending lockdown, so physical sources of inspiration are limited, but how can we stay inspired? Today we'll be looking at those methods of inspiration and how to carve out your time to make sure that you stay inspired. Um, as mentioned, you'll be having some opportunity afterwards to discuss this with other participants, um, which we're really excited. Anyway, I'd love to now hand myself over to Ravi and we're very delighted yeah, to hear your inspiring thoughts. Hi everybody, nice to meet you. I am going to be a bit of a wimp and share my screen because uh, I've made a presentation. So let's do that. Can everybody see this? Yes? Good. All right. So today I'll quickly, as uh, Francesca was saying, talk you through kind of why we're here. I'll go a bit very quickly over like who I am because I'm a bit random. And then it'd be, you know, we can talk a bit about who you, who you are and kind of what you're looking for as well from this. And I'll quickly talk about my own journey and kind of how I've found inspiration during that. And then perhaps the um, big elephant in the room kind of finding inspiration during this time, during a pandemic. I'll then, um, I'll then duck out gracefully and um, let Francesca take over on the breakout questions. Uh, which I've prepared to. So um, let's get into it. So first off, why are we here? I mean, let's not let's not beat around the bush. This pandemic has sucked, and uh, everyone's dealt with it in different ways and tried to put on brave faces. But um, it's been a really difficult period for so many different reasons. And you know, this is a picture of some of the unsavoury behaviour that's been happening in Amsterdam and around the Netherlands, um, but that's reflected in loads of different societies all over the world as well. It's, it's really hard to say positive, let alone kind of be inspired during this period where there's so much to feel anxious and negative about. But we're gonna, we're gonna take an attempt at it today and see you know, if there's some little tricks and tips that can make that possible. And look at the bigger picture as well, because we know uh, this is eventually gonna end and when we are allowed outside again, um, will be ready and raring to go uh, to find inspiration. So a little bit about who I am. So as Francesca mentioned, uh, I'm a co-founder of Salsop, um, but my background's in kind of TV and entertainment. I'll go into that, but um, yeah, I've worked for a bunch of different companies, worked with brands as well, uh, worked with lots of different types of creative companies and also lots of different creative people. Um, I'm also a second generation British Sri Lankan. Um, so yeah, I think I've found inspiration from lots of different places and um, been given it by lots of different types of people through the years. And uh, inspiration has been super vital uh, to my career. Who are you? So I'm, this is being recorded, so maybe it's best to kind of not make this interactive. Um, but it, it, it is worth thinking about what you kind of want to get out of this. And I, I didn't know if it was, you know, the more practical side of things or whether they're more general things within life that you wanted to find inspiration for, you know, are we trying to find happiness? Will our horizons give up, give back to society or, 
you know, do we want to find inspiration to give us better work-life balance and, you know, find a practical route to employment, um, you know, figure out career change. I think these, these inspiration tips that I'm going to go through um, have a duality to them. So um, they can work for both the practical and the general as well. So, but it's worth thinking about what you want to get out of this as well. And um, maybe specifically try and see whether these can apply to your individual life challenges as well. So quickly, my journey. Um, this is me. Um, this is me uh, 12 years ago, uh, which is a very different look. Um, but when I finished college, I was pretty sure I wanted to get into filmmaking and my main inspiration was cinema at the time. And I managed to get a gig in London, uh, unpaid of course, uh, which then led into kind of feature film and TV. Um, and that was during the recession, obviously in 2008. So I know all about it being hard to stay positive during a really tough time. Um, but during that period, you know, I got involved in a lot of writers rooms and met a lot of like-minded writers who were starting out and also a lot of writers who had been um, writing for decades and gave me some really sage advice. So I think immediately, even that early part of my career, I think uh, talking to other people was super important in, in staying inspired and also learning from people. Um, I then sidestepped into an internship at Channel 4, which is a kind of UK broadcaster, national broadcaster, known for its kind of diversity um, in the 2010s um, as a commissioner. And as part of that, I had to move to Glasgow um, in their nations and regions division. And that was awesome. And I learned so much and was inspired so much just by being in a different place. So if you are thinking about um, taking some time out to get inspired, I think spending a bit of time in the same place can sometimes, you know, recircuit the way you think and look at things. During that time, I started a short form strand called Random Max. It's still going in short form strand called Shooting Gallery. Um, and so during that time, I was basically using my job as an excuse to meet, you know, all of the people I was reading about and was, um, kind of inspired by, but didn't really know how to make a connection with. And sometimes just sending an email and going out of your comfort zone can mean that you can meet um, different types of creative people to be inspired by and who you think might not be very approachable actually are, you know, delighted to hear from you. So um, yeah, I think taking the bold front step forward and trying to find inspiration rather than it coming to you was a, definitely a learning there. I then went to, uh, a fashion magazine called Dazed and Confused and kind of set up its video department, including a site called Nowness. Uh, and we were kind of making up as we went along. And that was very much a period where I was inspired by my coworkers who also just had the same ambitions as me, but were perhaps just as inexperienced. And I think you can get a lot of energy from the people immediately around you if you try and embrace them in a different way um, as well. So I definitely think if you are in the workplace or you can just start a conversation based on inspiration as opposed to a practical need. That's really useful, I found. When I went to Vice, which is a youth uh, media publisher, which is where I met Francesca as well, um, you know, I, I, I kind of worked on a global scale a bit then. Travel was a massive inspiration there. If you're lucky enough to be able to travel for your work, you know, instigate that because learning about new places and cultures can be, um, yes, yeah, super super eye-opening and you can find inspiration in the places that you least expect it as well. During that period, Brexit happened about 2016. Didn't know it was going to go on for so long, but my wife and I decided to kind of leave the UK and come to Amsterdam for a new experience. And that involved kind of moving into uh, an agency, which I'd never done before. It was a new kind of um, sideways step. So very much coming to Amsterdam was a big, um, new inspiration because it was surrounded by new things uh, your eyes are wide open but also I suppose the other thing was taking a sidestep in your career is not really a, a bad shout either and sometimes if you're opening yourself up to new types of um, people and working structures you can get inspired in ways that you've never really expected there so you know we ended up working with Boiler Room, we transferred Red Bull, loads of different brands who I've never would have before just by um yeah, taking a little bit of a, of a sidestep, not following the plan, which is cool. 
And as Francesca mentioned, yeah, we, I started a pandemic um, with my wife. Uh, didn't start a pandemic, so we started a company during a pandemic with my wife, um, Lucy, you can see that. Uh, and that's also like another um, funny thing where sometimes you can find inspiration by the people who annoy you the most uh, if you just rescue the conversation. So yeah, we decided to start a business together quite by accident and ended up finding and unlocking a new part of our relationship in, in that way too. So I think again, throughout my career, I've been inspired in places I never really expected to be. And I think, um, yeah, definitely would pass those words of wisdom on. Also on top of that, I've kind of learned some tools and techniques across all of my different jobs. And I use these techniques all the time uh, to find inspiration. There's one video I keep on coming back to, and I'll, I think we can share a link after the talk as well. There's a series uh, about 10 years ago by a guy called Kirby Ferguson, um, which were kind of a series of video essays about this idea of everything being a remix, nothing being original. Um, the idea that, you know, you have to copy something to learn something, transform it in, a, in order to innovate. And I think that's a really good way of looking at inspiration and almost copying and mimicking that inspiration to see how it feels to do it. So this, I'm going to show a little clip from this video. It's um, only three minutes, but the video essay itself is about 40, but um, take a look at it. I, I still find it really useful today. The act of creation is surrounded by a fog of myths. Myths that creativity comes via inspiration, that original creations break the mold, that they're the products of geniuses and appear as quickly as electricity can heat a filament. But creativity isn't magic. It happens by applying ordinary tools of thought to existing materials. And the soil from which we grow our creations is something we scorn and misunderstand even though it gives us so much, and that's copying. Put simply, copying is how we learn. We can't introduce anything new until we're fluent in the language of our domain. And we do that through emulation. For instance, all artists spend their formative years producing derivative work. Bob Dylan's first album contained 11 cover songs. Richard Pryor began his stand-up career doing a not very good imitation of Bill Cosby. And Hunter S. Thompson retyped The Great Gatsby just to get the feel of writing a great novel. Nobody starts out original. We need copying to build a foundation of knowledge and understanding. And after that, things can get interesting. After we've grounded ourselves in the fundamentals through copying, it's then possible to create something new through transformation, taking an idea and creating variations. This is time consuming tinkering, but it can eventually produce a breakthrough. James Watt created a major improvement to the steam engine because he was assigned to repair a Thomas Newcomen steam engine. He then spent 12 years developing his version. Christopher Latham Scholes modeled his typewriter keyboard on a piano. This design slowly evolved over five years into the QWERTY layout we still use today. And Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb. His first patent was improvement in electric lamps, but he did produce the first commercially viable one after trying 6,000 different materials for the filament. These are all major advances, but they're not original ideas so much as tipping points in a continuous line of invention by many different people. But the most dramatic results can happen when ideas are combined. By connecting ideas together, creative leaps can be made, producing some of history's biggest breakthroughs. Johann Gutenberg's printing press was invented around 1440, but almost all its components had been around for centuries. Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company didn't invent the assembly line, interchangeable parts, or even the automobile itself. But they combined all these elements in 1908 to produce the first mass market car, the Model T. And the internet slowly grew over several decades as networks and protocols merged. It finally hit critical mass in 1991 when Tim Berners-Lee added the World Wide Web. These are the basic elements of creativity. Copy, transform, and combine. So yeah. I um, The reason I like that video so much, and it goes on for ages, so uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, it can be a bit overwhelming, you have to watch it a few times, but what I found great was um, 
didn't really need to find guilty. You didn't need to feel guilty anymore about where you found inspiration. In fact, it's completely fine to look wherever you feel comfortable to find that. It's actually a deeply personal experience. And all of that process can lead you through lateral connections into somewhere really original to find your own like path, I think. And I've used that ever since. And I always look back through my own personal history, uh, people I love or have mentored me have always passed on bits of inspiration. And it's almost like a little mosaic. Uh, over time, you build up these these moments of inspiration and I try to revisit them quite regularly, maybe once a year. Um, and I'm sure if you look back on your own personal history, you'll be able to see, you know, bits that people recommended to you that changed your mind about things or things that you found inspiration or that you haven't really touched for ages. So, I mean, here we've got like Orientalism by Said, which is a big important book for me, but you know, I first read that when I was 18, likewise with Twin Peaks or Apex Twin. Um, you know, I found Andre Tarkovsky cinema in kind of college. And again, I only recently watched it after 10 years in a cinema here. And so you can have these repeated moments where you can see with your life experiences, things that inspired you in different ways. And you can almost reconnect with yourself in a really interesting way. So if you're looking for something or somewhere to start, I would definitely look within yourself and say, well, you know, when I was five, 10, 20, 30 or beyond, what were the things that inspired me then? And how do I look at them now? And, you know, um, do I still find them inspiring or can I find inspiring things I didn't see before? So I keep on doing that. Um, as I said in, in earlier bits through my own journey as well, I love meeting new people. My job uh, through running a creative agency is very much about meeting different types of people all the time, uh, but also learning from them. So whether that's, you know, a younger member of staff or, this is a guy called Barana, for example, who I was mentoring, who's from Balmer in, um, in Southeast Amsterdam. Um, you know, it was through talking to him, asking what he was listening to, what was he watching, what didn't he like, him inviting me to his neighborhood, that, you know, I really saw a whole different side to Amsterdam outside the ring that, you know, led to a documentary that we made about it. So again, those chance conversations and then opening yourself up to following them up and, you know, really leaning into listening as opposed to dictating can you know open new windows and wavelengths which i've always found really interesting in fact most of the the most uh, memorable work i've created has come from those funny one-off conversations i didn't really expect to have and also like starting those conversations with no agenda i mean this cartoon really sums up linkedin in a way doesn't it like if you're on linkedin you're in a certain mode of thought and you probably even if you realize it or not are coming across in a certain way Sometimes it's nice just, nice just to ask someone, even if you are on LinkedIn, uh, just saying what about something, um, you know, random uh, or, you know, saying you're inspired by their work and not having an agenda beyond that. Um, I think it's really good to start uh, conversations about inspiration without knowing the end goal. And some might lead nowhere, but sometimes the best uh, friendships and uh, working relationships can come out of um, approaching things in a wide-eyed uh, almost naive way I've found. So definitely would start, uh, you know, conversations with new people with inspiration as your starting point, uh, for sure. I studied history at college. Uh, uh, so I love looking backwards to find inspiration as well. These images on the right are from a brilliant Instagram account called Ad Archives that only posts fashion um, ad tutorials from the 90s. But I think, you know, whether you're looking at the 1800s or ancient Egypt or wherever, you know, the recent past, there's something you can always learn. And actually, most ideas are not new. They're just, as you saw from the previous uh, video I showed, uh, kind of reinterpreted core beliefs. So I think learning from generations before and learning to kind of explore in that realm can be a great source of inspiration. Uh, and it's endless in a way. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely encourage looking backwards. Uh, this is a guy called Juice World who sadly passed away, but it's part of a genre called SoundCloud rap, which is a really interesting random collision of like new metal and hip hop that you would never have expected to combine maybe 10 years ago. And it's a great example of this lateral thinking and cross-pollination leading to unexpected ideas. 
missing, missing and mashing things that haven't been mashed before or trying to connect two things that you wouldn't normally put together um, can often lead as that video I showed as well explained into interesting parts of inspiration. So maybe sticking out with something that you're not 100% sure about might lead to you know, a place of inspiration that you hadn't thought about before as well. So definitely encourage that. Also diversify what you're looking at and where you're looking for inspiration. We spend so much time on our phones and even more so now in the pandemic, which we'll get into, but um, you know, actively even within those platforms, trying to look outside of what's easy um, and maybe even looking at things that you don't agree with can lead to uh, interesting moments too, I think. And that leads to the other point I have, which is always interesting is look where no one else is looking. Like when was the last time you went into a library um, online or offline um, and just went in with no agenda and seeing where the wind took you? I think that's something we never make space for, um, but can be uh, just super, super rewarding as an act in itself, you know, just looking or reading or listening to something just because you think it's interesting. I think the final point in terms of um, the final few points in terms of my journey and like my inspiration techniques, I would say are, you know, starting product projects DIY. It's one thing talking about things, or you can also learn and find inspiration by doing them. These are a collective called um, Flock Together. They're uh, POC uh, bird watchers in London who realised that there wasn't um, a space for people of colour to explore the outdoors. So they just did it themselves, DIY, and that's led to some fantastic learnings for them, I think. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said for doing, I think, Empower Amsterdam is a great example of that as well. Also, like sharing knowledge back, it's not a one-way street. So, you know, I'm so happy to be able to kind of share my experiences and knowledge, but uh, also listen to them. And I think we shouldn't be precious about our inspiration and we should be evangelical in the way that we inspire and talk to people around us about the things that we love as well. And uh, that will lead to more positive connections, I think. And that the simplest thing, but the hardest thing to do is make time to be inspired or create space to discover, blocking out a whole Friday or a Saturday afternoon and forcing yourself really to um, try and it, it might go nowhere for the first couple of times there might be only one out of four occasions where that space leads to something productive but just having that space to look forward to and uh, you know spend guilt free is really important and it's going to make you, know, you be able to grow and that's something I've had to learn as well over the years but uh, I always make space and time to try and be inspired so that's during normal times but then it's really hard during a pandemic because all of those things I talked about, exhibitions, travel, live music, the spontaneous conversation, you know, all those things I would normally fall back on are gone. So it's really tough to actively find inspiration um, during this time, as we said at the start, but it's still possible. The first thing I've done um, is changing the way you look at your digital life and your digital tools. Scrolling and doom scrolling on Instagram and Twitter is one thing, but go on your follower list and see how many of those things you think are productive or start a separate account um, that looks purely at things that you're inspired by and start strategically following people that you think are interesting. You can do that by Googling and finding recommendations. Sometimes the Instagram algorithm is really good at that. Same for Twitter as well. I think if you actively have a separate account or convert your current account to be a place of inspiration, those are really incredibly powerful tools. In fact, uh, you can get lost in uh, Instagram and YouTube in that way. So definitely look at the tools at your disposal in a different way. Uh, I would also say don't feel guilty. Um, this is Drake telling us about you know, spending hours scrolling on Netflix. But sometimes even just reading the descriptions and seeing the things that are out there can be enough to give you a spark. Or sometimes the 19th episodes of Suits that you've watched might have something within it or a theme that inspires you. So I think also just not feeling guilty and, you know, maybe not forcing inspiration to come, but 
you know, being open and to thinking about things as you're seeing them in a different way can be quite cool. Now is not the time to feel guilty about anything. Uh, you know, just getting out of bed is an achievement, I think. So um, just be open to things coming your way when you least expect them, I think is what I'm trying to say here. There are also a whole host of new tools that have come out during this um, pandemic that I think are really interesting. Clubhouse is a invite only, but it's very easy to get an invite um, tool. There are lots of um, talks like this as well. Um, but you know, they're online spaces that are purely there for inspiration and learning. Um, and you should get involved in them and they're really open societies. Sometimes you can just sit back and listen. Sometimes you can actively participate. But again, if you carve out one hour a day to spend listening, uh, you might find something that uh, you might not have expected to give you inspiration. So definitely explore some of the new tools that have popped up during the pandemic. Uh, I'd also say reevaluate during this period what's core to you and how do you make the most of it. Um, you know, this is a unique time where you can stop and think and no one's going to hold you to account. Me personally, I started to look at you know, the advertising work that we were doing with the agency and realised that I didn't feel like we were doing enough within activist causes or within documentary work. So we just started doing more of it and started reaching out and not putting, you know, necessarily profit at the top of our list, but maybe second or third has helped us, yeah, really start doing rewarding work. And, you know, again, I think documentaries have been a core cool part of my journey. And I think you can look at what's really got you motivated through the years or maybe looking back at why you've taken on certain roles and what the red thread is and maybe leaning into that a bit as well. So self-reflection reflection is a really great thing we can do now um, in your own time. The other thing that's been really nice is reconnecting with old friends, old colleagues, you know, embracing email and WhatsApp, starting, you know, remembering people who you might not have talked to for 10 or 12 years. The experience in and of itself can be really, you know, anxious to begin with, but actually really rewarding. And you can start, you know, jamming with those people that you, you know, left some time ago uh, as inspirational partners and find a new lease of life. I've had a really great time doing that with school friends, with my old colleagues at Channel 4, who've gone on to do all sorts of really interesting things since. So I've had some great conversations that way. I'd encourage you uh, to do the same for sure. Also, rabbit holes can lead to interesting places. So we said um, about Instagram and curating, but actually this is something I did yesterday. I, was sort of, I don't know why at two in the morning look at old, looking at old rave videos from the 90s that I wasn't around for. And somehow through that ended up in this Fall of Civilizations podcast, <laughs> it's pretty dark, but um, all about kind of how different empires through the ages collapsed and whether we're going through the same now. And that's totally random. And I have no idea how I ended up there. Uh, but sometimes you kind of can sleepwalk into fantastic new places of knowledge. So um, sometimes going down the rabbit hole can be cool, um, unless you're getting radicalized and joining the alt-right. And then in which case I would say probably stop and check yourself in that place as well. But yeah, I think um, just exploring and being open and, you know, almost childlike in your, in your, um, in your thirst for something new can be quite cool as well. Finally, like break out your bubble. And this sounds so much easier than it actually is, but if you work in the fashion industry, stop looking at fashion. If you work in um, literature and publishing, maybe it's time to connect with someone who works in the sciences or biology or academia. Like I think you can find ways of really radically going out of your bubble. It's one thing for me saying, I'm gonna start looking at musicians because I work in advertising, but it's a whole different thing to say if I'm gonna actively try and work with um, a biologist. I don't know how, but making connection in that way and learning from them. So how can you do that? How can you, you know, learn a new, like look at learning a new language or uh, try and find out about something that really sits outside of your work life actively? Um, it's something that takes time, but you know, again, if you consciously try to do, uh, it might be quite useful. So those are some of the techniques I think that can help, you know, right now with just a laptop or a phone. The last thing I think um, that we could all do is just 
take time to digital detox. We're not allowed to maybe meet people outside, but we are allowed to walk um, outside for an unlimited amount of time. And I find going for a one or two hour walk, sometimes without headphones or anything and without really a direction can be really nice. They say like the best ideas can come to you in the shower or whatever. I think it's an extension when you just go outside and enjoy nature and um, just try to disconnect. Even when you come back refreshed, it can really break up a day, especially when um, you know we wake up in the dark and go to bed in the dark, maybe a lunchtime comes kind of strolling. Remembering that you live in a physical environment can be quite good if you're stuck on Zoom calls all day. So I would, it's a really simple thing to do, but I think it's a really uh, rewarding thing for sure as well. And that's it really. So um, I'm going to hand over to uh, Francesca and the crew around that, but it, I hope some of that was useful and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you ever so much, Ravi. Um, I'm sure you'll all agree that was an amazing, inspirational talk. I've definitely, it's led me think about things myself. So just before we end um, with the recording, I'm going to just talk about the two different um, breakout questions, just so that for those of you at home that are watching this back, can have your own chance to think about those on the back of the amazing presentation that we've just had with Ravi. So the first question is, um, what, what's an inspirational moment that you could reconnect with? So going back to where Ravi and talked about inspirational films or books or things that have inspired you in the past. I know it's definitely something I want to look into myself. So yeah, what's an inspirational moment you could reconnect with? And the second question is, what could you do if you carved out just 15 minutes in your daily routine to find inspiration? So what could you do if you carved out just 15 minutes of your daily routine to find inspiration? Um, so yeah, hopefully those two questions will help you to fire, find more inspiration during these continued months of the pandemic. But yeah, once again, let's thank Ravi ever so much for that amazing presentation. Um, so I'm gonna stop recording now.